We get it started. And right away, jumping in to snag that is Pritchard for the Ducks. I mean, Jim Nance, Grant Hill right now. That's right, let's go. Minimum. Great extension here. Look for back cuts. North Carolina so long on the perimeter with Jackson and Pinson guarding. Like an offense, I think, on Brooks. Can't afford that with that guy. Yeah, Dylan Brooks called for that moving screen just seconds into the game. And that's crucial because Oregon doesn't play a lot of guys. Six, mm -hmm. seven men off They're not total. Deep. So they, they got to stay out of foul trouble. Dylan Brooks, too important to this team. And I know they didn't pay you in the NBA to screen and get a foul. <laughs> you want to get open, set a screen. <laughs> Here's Barry. How about this? A three right away. And a report by Tracy. Would he be effective shooting from the outside? It's been a struggle all week in practice. He pops a three in the opening nice, seconds. Nice slip to the goal. But how about the nice block by Pinson? And just so unselfish here, Justin Jackson finding his teammate, Joel Berry, letting everyone know that his feet, the foundation, are good on his jumper. And again, he was 0 for 5 from 3 against Kentucky, and it had been such a struggle for him in practice this week. In and out for the Ducks, and it's Pinson. Who can really make plays. We saw a nice little look here. <laughs> How about like that? That's a Hicks. Oh, <laughs> what a block. That was Bell denying. And they say it belongs to the Tar Heels. A little out of control. <laughs> this is something, though, that Jordan Bell did against Kansas, setting a tone early with plays like this now against North Carolina. How about that? And May wasn't a beneficiary that time as he was against Kentucky. Yeah, he had eight blocks to Bell against the Jayhawks and influenced so many shots. Back inside, though, Hicks. Had an open yeah, chance does. there, oh, maybe happened? just fearing the presence of Bell. And that's a couple of turnovers Looking here for Oregon it. early. They got to value the basketball against this team. Every possession counts. Henson, tough shot. That's a tough match for Pritchard, I think, size-wise. Jackson, that's wide of the mark. Look Henson. at this size. For North Carolina, mm. getting it down low. Easily. Uh, that's their game. When they do that, they are in tune. Uh, Dorsey, one of those guys that can dribble. They got a hold. Uh, it might be Meeks with a little small change on the cut. It is. And coach, right now, offensive rebounding. That's what North Carolina does. Just, you know, they are the top offensive rebounding team in the nation in the nation and they're 16 and 0 when they scored 20 plus points on second chance opportunities so right. you got to block out if you're the Ducks well, you back of the rim there for Brooks and the Ducks blanked here the first couple of minutes of the game a little back screen pop and this is where he's tough I think the duck in and Brooks has to be careful with that one foul Hicks fade away no tapped up by Meeks. Nice kick. Outside the Berry. Not a second time. And that is Bell getting the board. He challenges and attacks Pritchard, doesn't he? Unabashed. Little speed by the strong looking backcourt guy. Yeah, after five empty trips, he gets the hoop. Meeks takes the jumper. And a quick possession for North Carolina. Richard. There's a three. That kid is something. What great leadership qualities. Just solid. He's a freshman, but so mature. And he's going at Barry, testing that ankle early. Got the first five of the game for Oregon. Meeks down low. Spins. And a call on Oregon. Uh, four time state champion can fill it up. You saw him go to the rim. We watched him hold the ball, pop it, big hands, great leadership. Look at those mitts. They're like yours. <laughs> Speaking of mitts, he's going to be throwing out the first pitch tomorrow to open up the baseball <laughs> season here for the Diamondbacks against the Giants. We're going to see that blooper somewhere along the line. <laughs> yeah. oh, no confidence. Right. He's already nervous about it. He didn't need that. <laughs> Like the pace of the game early here. Both teams don't mind going up and down. And of course, coming to the Cavell. Williams, Big B. He's got to make a contribution against his big front line of Carolina. Yep. As Meeks hits them both. He's been 
Carolina's best free throw shooter in the tournament as Kennedy Meeks. And Bigby Williams now, you haven't really seen he, him and Bell play together, but that size of North Carolina, you got to match them inside. Dorsey gave it up at the last minute. Now Bell. How do you leave the ball, right? When you think of it, the most important guy right there at the rim. He's shooting 74% from the field in the tournament is Bell. Barry takes it into the paint off the glass. No, tapped up by Meeks. And when Bell comes over to contest the shot, no one there to rebound and box out his man. That's what North Carolina does, crash the glass. Already with four offensive rebounds, North Carolina, the best rebounding team in college basketball this year. I like to turn and face now. Bell. Pretty. Over Meeks. Very confident kid. Well, he's been playing, why not? Yeah, he should be. He was the most outstanding player of that Midwest Regional. And Jim, now they go to that matchup. A lot of, a lot of pointing. And Carolina consistently has been very good against his own. Flashing, turning, dumping, and in this case, driving. X. Too strong and out to Ennis. Roy Williams runs the floor effortlessly. Dumping it down. Nope. Big B. Williams was the target. He can go. Wants to take on Pritchard. Jackson, left hand. No, outside first. And that was a smart foul there by Pritchard, but too many turnovers early for Oregon. You got to value the basketball. You got to tie one. Second foul, though, as we went to the break there. Big moment. Peyton Pritchard has to go to the bench. Alongside Kevin McKenna, old net. Longtime pal of Dana Altman. Oregon's in their little zone right now, matchup zone. Good ball movement. And look who's on the floor, yeah, Jim. Luke May, his first shot is blocked. And they That's two for Bell. They watch the tape. Yeah. You got the two players who were the outstanding players of their regionals. May down in Memphis in the south. Bell in Kansas City. A nice kick out. Dennis. That rattles out for him. May able to run over and get it. And one thing about May, too, he's a good post up guy. Nice cross by Pinson. Now pass. Out to Ennis. Snaps it ahead. It's Benson who's come in for Pritchard. Ooh. And Ennis. Quick draw. Wow. Big B. Williams keeps it at this end. And Benson real sound. Dorsey can be, loves to go left, too. Really good handle. Look at this kid. He really prize that length of Jackson. 6'8", guarding him. Ooh, that may have been a double dribble. And that's a, right. walk. a walk. Something in there. And, and right now, Oregon, just that's two or three bad offensive possessions. Coming down, taking a long three-pointer. Uh, too many turnovers early. They got to get good shots at the basket every time against this Carolina team. Coach Altman may be talking about that last long-range three attempt. He said that was from Canada. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. uh, or maybe Philadelphia because he was down at Villanova for a while. Well, the Ducks also have turned it over five times, and we're not even six minutes into the game. You know, Ennis and I have something in common. Maybe the oldest guys in the tournament. Yeah, he's been <laughs> six the year. <laughs> oh, man. Double transfer from Rice and Villanova. You got to get Meeks to the rim, even if he screens. Barry. As you know, he had too far to run on that. Quick jack. Now they play free and easy and confidently, this Oregon team. And Bell, not bad with nice kill. Ooh, oh, tough catch. Boy, that's a sixth turnover by Oregon as Benson was open in the corner. Both sides are not executing turnovers. Turn turnovers on one side, 20% mm -hmm. exactly. shooting on the other by North Carolina. And a lot of good looks, too, right around the rim. Yeah. Nate Britt has come in for Coach Roy Williams and Tony Bradley. Their freshman who had a nice game against Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And trying to space Meeks, so he looked a little tired the last two trips. Here's the matchup once again. May. To Britt. A good driver, Britt. And Bradley, a great offensive rebound. They didn't want him at the rim. This zone right now, so much activity. Oregon just making life difficult. Tough shot by Jackson. And it's too long. 
And the push off call against North Carolina against May. And right now for North Carolina against the defense, the zone defense, you have to penetrate it with the dribble or mm -hmm. with the pass. But you can't settle on the perimeter for, for his contested jump shot. It is confusing, though, Jim, to play against this combination. I mean, you don't see it every day, and they're very good at it. They communicate great. Well, you said it well, Grant. Both teams just out of sync here early. And this guy's a great one on one player. Plays with a lot of confidence and edge. Tough shot. Brooks. And Bradley. Carolina's missed its last five shots, shooting 19%. May. And he's hit. Nice hesitation at the rim. He's got good size and strength, but it's all about the delivery. Without a doubt, and inside Joel Berry, just very patient. Delivers to May's outside hand and presence of mind to ball fake to get both of them in the air and draw the foul. So what a week it was back at Chapel Hill for Luke May, who's back in the classroom at 8 o'clock on Monday morning. <laughs> and how about what he got about, what, 13 hours after being the hero in Memphis, Penson returns. And then he walked into class and got a, got and a standing, got a standing ovation. Yeah. We gave a standing ovation when the professor left. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> They gave you a standing ovation wrap any time you came to class. It was such a rare, a rare sighting. Uh, I think he's a little better student, my guess, but what an exhilarating feeling watching him make that shot, huh? Well, that's a nice combo there, huh? Roy in the heel. Yeah. No field goal either side for over three minutes. A nice defense there. Britt really gets those puppies moving. They're having trouble with their dribble drive game here. And it's Benson. Oh, and he got hit. It might have been May for a second yeah. one. Yeah, it you're is. Right. They're a little overzealous. And you love the effort closing out on a shooter, but you have to be smart. Well, he won't get a standing ovation from the bench on this foul, though. You don't <laughs> like the, you know, the close out right at the body. You get a jump stop, skip out, or run by. And he's going to get to shoot three. Benson, the junior from right here, Tempe, Arizona. A local kid. Now they've done well in Canada over the years, this club. Found the home. A lot of kids able to come. Brooks comes to mind as one of the best. Ennis. Ennis, of course. Uh, Smith on the, on the floor, 6 7, gives him a little size. Not a great outside shooter. Struggles uh, 3 for 17 from 3. But work on this end and rebound. It's a very good at finding people who can get through the cracks that you alluded to. He's tall enough. He can see uh, over guys in that zone. Mm -hmm. Forced him to go late in the shot clock, too. Under Not 10. Now with under five, it's Hicks. And what a great cut. Didn't finish it. Yeah, Hicks has missed his first five from the floor. Up ahead quickly. Ennis slicing in. And it's a call against Carolina. Is he hurt? Pinson, the way he fell. Pinson, by the way, stayed down for well over a minute. And then uh, he was able to walk to his bench under his own power. Looked like a little bit of knee to knee contact there as Ennis bumped into Pinson's knee. A little bruise there, but he seems to be moving well. When they're young, they heal quickly. A little shuffling. Yeah. When you played, you just loosened up the arm. You didn't any shuffling like that, I know. <laughs> so that brings Innes to the line. Shoot a couple of shots. And Raft, you made an allusion to it that he might be, um, you know, second oldest in the tournament after you, you said. <laughs> but he started his career at Rice, then the Villanova, where you saw him a lot, average mm -hmm. 10 a game there for Coach Jay Wright. He's the only active player with at least 25 starts at three different schools. And he got granted a sixth year of eligibility. With an injury, which yep. in fairness to him, a great opportunity. One of those kids from Canada is shaped up at the college level. Nice pass to Bradley, who waited, and it paid off. And that's what you have to do against that, that three-quarter court pressure. You have to attack it, get something easy inside for the Tar Heels. And you run the wrinkle. Why not stay in that combo, don't you think? They've had some problems. And Brooks being active now without the ball, a little hold. They get Hicks, I think, on it. He is theatrical out there. 
We've seen games where he likes to woof a little bit, Brooks. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen What's that a lot. lot. He got a little edge to him, and definitely they feed off of that emotion. Yeah. They might call him a babbling Brooks. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> give yourself an assist and a basket. Nice, this, a nice rotation caused the walk, and Hicks was the one. He went out, took out the passing lane for Menace. And you know what's interesting, guys? Oregon right now. They take you out of their rhythm. Mm -hmm. Michigan, they played in the Sweet 16, high-powered offense. They had a low-scoring game, and then Kansas was all out of sorts. Mm -hmm. And so right now, North Carolina offensively just can't get into any kind of flow or rhythm, and this Oregon defense has been steady. Mm -hmm. North Carolina's hit only four out of 18 from the field. That's why this game is tied, even though it's been seven turnovers to none. That's the first one for the Tar Heels. They'll attack. And it's Brooks. Tapped up, yes, by Smith. That's what he's got to do. He had a little dimension deep in the bench, but not a good entry pass on the duck in to Jackson. Now the first hoop for the Ducks in five minutes. A very choppy beginning here to this one. I love the way Brooks plays, though. He plays with an attitude. Hicks spins step, in steps. and took an extra step for sure. And that's what you talked about out of source. Look at that denial. He sets up an open floor opportunity. And this is what he does. He just challenges and the cleanup job. Beautiful by Smith. Look at that by Smith. The freshman from Seattle, Washington. Hicks, who has struggled here early, turns it over and again 0 for 5 from the field. So to the bench. Meeks back on the floor, defending here. Bell left open. Boy, they do a nice job. They curl off that low box play and then the duck in by Bell, who rings it. Don't leave him open. Oh, look at Jackson. Playing with such confidence. Great quick jack. Look at this challenge. They got a push, I think, on JJ. Let's see. It was Jackson. No. They call it on Brett. Yeah. And Ennis just so physical, always attacking, using those broad shoulders to generate contact in the open floor. Just that crossover, and you were right. Well, Jackson ran by him. I thought they may have sliced in there. Britt, pretty good defender, couldn't get in position. Tar Heels bring May back to action. Oh, Dana is really upset. Yeah. They're not getting their offense. Yeah, stomping his foot at the far end. There's a weave once in a while to run out, and they do some ISOs frequently, too. And they are patient. In his front of the rim. And a scrappy play here to keep it for the Tar Heels, or get it to the Tar Heels by Woods. Yeah, nice little play. Good balance by seventh. Jackson just hit a three. That two rattles out, and it belongs to Oregon. And May on Brooks. See if they go at him a little bit with those fouls. Nice step and go. They take away that left hand beautifully. Brooks likes to back in, too. Now he drives, but he shuffled the feet. Another missed scoring opportunity for Oregon. Eight turnovers by Oregon. Yeah, but not really taking advantage at the other end, right? As, as often as they should be. And on this in North Carolina, they got to figure out this zone. It's been ineffective getting the ball inside. Forced to take contested three-pointers. Great activity by the Ducks. You want to have one plane two, or two plane one, I should say. On the blocks, makes pretty. There's your answer. The big fella. Banging it home. Mix with six. Nice job forcing the baseline. And a two-point shot by and, Benson. And that's their game. Drive and kick. Find the open shooter. Great rhythm to their offense when they play that way, the Ducks. Oregon up 20 to 18. Now they want you to just dribble drive. You've got to mismatch yourself on the offensive end. Overload on them. Brett got a screen by Meeks. Long with the shot. But look at Meeks. Get to the ball first. May. 
three, no. Well, Jackson, I don't know, he's too unselfish there, huh? I thought he should have jacked it. Once again, they go side to side, very relaxed. Even Brooks walks around. They're in no hurry. Let's see if they can get Dorsey into action. Grant, you uh, said at the top that he's been Mr. March. Would it carry over to April? He hasn't scored so far in this game. Down low. Well, they got a block. Maybe in the area. Look at that collision. That's going to be Woods of Carolina called for the foul. It'll be a one and one out of the break. It is sloppy early and choppy. Oregon leads. But I'll tell you what, if you're Oregon, if you had told me with 734 left in the first half that Brooks or Dorsey mm. would not score mm -hmm. and you'd have eight turnovers and still be up, I'd have thought you were crazy. Yeah, exactly. If the, the zone or matchup has been so effective, great impact, particularly against the offense of Carolina. Missed on the front end of the one and one. And they did, by the way, go and review to confirm one of the officials on the three with Benson. And now Pinson back Ooh. on the floor, Ooh. and boy, does he come out firing. Wow. I guess he was testing that knee. Yeah, goodness. Stretching the D a little bit. A tough matchup here, I think, for May with Ennis, the way he dribble drives. And they get back now. Switch, May on Burks. Nice slip and kick. Here's Brooks. Short. And that's tapped out. It belongs to Carolina. And that was a great contest by Jackson on Brooks. Brooks was wide open and extra effort by Jackson to contest. They'll bring Barry back on the floor for Woods on the North Carolina side. And look at Jackson coming in. Well, he was right there, too. That could have blocked uh, it. Yeah. Brooks is 0 for 4 from the field and scoreless. With Pritchard out, this team is really hung together. Benson's been solid. Automatic switch on this exchange of the match and another good handle here Again Bell that they don't yeah. care who you're guarding right and Bell is so good Sliding his feet. He's mobile. He's athletic. He can guard everybody on the floor and showing it there uh, Against Joel Berry forcing the turnover At some point you gotta bring that dribble out. Yeah, get him organized what you need So may back to the bench North Carolina has its first five on the floor. And Jim, when you said 20 final fours for this Carolina test. First ever, first <laughs> program ever. It's unbelievable. Of course, back to the great one. Dean I loves that left. I think couldn't finish. Dorsey put back, yes, Brooks. Typical though, once you go to the rim, some havoc is created. Look at Ennis Got chasing after Perry. Hicks. He Walk. traveled. He looked like he wasn't sure where he wanted to go with it. I think he was shocked he was that wide yeah. open. <laughs> Should I shoot it? If I do, I'm going to join Roy. <laughs> yeah. Once again, Oregon, they confuse you. They junk the game up. This zone has been so effective in the postseason. Yeah, just what you were saying before, Grant, huh? Both guys struggling. Nice back cut. Ooh, nice save. Here comes Brooks flying in. Nope. Outside he was shoved. Pinson, I think. And a small change. It is on Pinson. And I just love the way Brooks drives so hard and so physical. He seeks the contact as he goes to the basket. And now he's shooting two free throws. And Grant, what he does best from a standing spot to acceleration, it's not only with strength, but speed of foot. So the Pac-12 player of the year. The coach's vote hits. <laughs> Must be a, a prominent so, alum. So one the way they... If I may be, a little oppressed program. <laughs> How about what it took for this program, though, to go into Kansas City last week and beat the number one seed, the Jayhawks, without Chris Boucher, who ripped his ACL during the Pac-12 tournament. And that made them big, and he could stretch the D. Nice entry here to Meeks, and patience at the rim. Great look. Jackson, because you got to guard him, and he's got that size. Oh, the Dorsey switch. steps inside, off the front of the rim. 
And we got a player hobbling. It's Bell for Oregon. And he didn't get back. Taking advantage is Meeks. Yeah, Bell is, he's hobbling. He's trying to hide it. I don't think Dana is looking over. Dana you, might, he, may, he may want to get a timeout, yep. And you mentioned that game in Kansas City. But without Bell, they would not have won. But the big fella, the strength underneath, running the floor. He's a rim runner. Meeks taking advantage of Bell not being there. Here's where he got hurt. Ooh. Oh my goodness. Boy, that is. How many turned ankles have we had here in the tournament? Uh -oh. And this is the guy I think that made them a really unbelievable team. Yep. They say his spirit. That was his, Boucher. Made his contributions of Boucher, yes. Their third shot. leading scorer, their second leading rebounder, and their top shot blocker. Yeah. I think he led nine he had in one game, of course, dealt with those eight. Off the floor, it's Pinson. Stolen away. Up ahead is Ennis. Vincent decides to go Brooks. Now there's Ennis. It's a three, and it's good. In rhythm. They don't get back. Uh, they do eventually. But in rhythm, that's Ennis's game. Not the quick deep jack earlier. Nice show because he doesn't need run roll. Outside, no for Bradley. Look at the little guy. And look at Pritchard back on the floor with the two fouls. He's been sitting most of this half. Same spot. Innes again. What a dribble into the lane. Draws everybody's attention. Just get him organized. And North Carolina has its biggest tournament deficit. Down eight. A 13 to four stretch for the Ducks. And what's amazing with this zone, they don't foul. They stay out of foul trouble. They can't afford it with too many. Barry. Yeah, it's uh, thrown to the floor. Oh, well, you know, you talked about age, and I got a bias case coming against you, Jim Nance. <laughs> but this guy doesn't need any assisted living. He's been around a while. Get the puppies organized. Ooh, and he's drilling big time. So they've done it all now. Super Bowls, college football championships and they wanted this new Monday on CBS and the first time now is staying to the floor they haven't switched any defenses no run and jump which they've gotten away from well here's what on cue after oh, the timeout it's Barry and he falls no. to the floor and will that be number three on Pritchard you got it tough yeah boy his leadership qualities contributions and Anytime you switch things out of a timeout, it's imperative. It's just go over that timeline a little easier. And you sound like a coach. Figure, figure it out a little bit. Oh, right into the trap. Speaking of a coach, Dana Altman getting his first chance to be in this special setting of a Final Four. And he's a guy who had gone through the junior college ranks as a coach. And then Mitch Richmond was one of his junior college stars. He ended up. Coming to Kansas State as an assistant to Lon Kruger, who he considers his mentor. And, and Jim, we met with him the other day, and he said he's come to the Final Fours all these years, but you hope your team can come with you one That's day right. too, and now he got that chance. <laughs> his first time in the Final Four. Right. This is 83 in Albuquerque at the pit. He went to get his tickets at the coaches' convention. It said row one. He said, I can't believe it. But they started to count. Row one was at the top, not the bottom. <laughs> That's great. And how about Mitch calling him while we were there? Nice little floater with the left. Ooh, that he's pretty nifty by Jackson that time. And he's got Dorsey now. He's got great lateral speed. And a nice hesitation gets him to the rim. And coach, I love this right here. Attacking the defense, not settling, probing, getting it to the paint. And how about that with his left hand? He loves that floater. He does. And look at the action, too. Williams right there. Big B, big. So, two shots coming for Dorsey. And that puts him on the board for the first time tonight. And again, he had come in with seven straight 20 point performances. That goes back to the Pac 12 tournament. He was on fire, no question about it. His consistency, his shooting, his confidence with the dribble. And he's got his first two. Oregon's up six. Now they know Jackson's got length. Been stretched the D. 
Nice catch. Oh, and Hicks says, you know what? I'm not missing another one. He keeps doing that to have hiccups. <laughs> wow. Nice find on the drive. Number zero. His first basket of the game, and that one at that. As Bell, all well defended by the Tar Heels. Britt gives it up to Jackson. And look at Innes. Wow. I'll tell you, he gave it up too early, though. Britt should have kept the dribble. They could have had an easy layup. Here he puts the big guy in jeopardy, really, in the open floor. And how about that? Ennis. And is getting his steps. To <laughs> this whole team could block shots. And open up the bedroom door. We got another picture. Foul was on Benson, his first, and Jackson, the first team All America, and Atlantic Coast Conference Player of the Year. We'll get another one as Brooks. Checks back in. And I like the adjustment North Carolina's made in the half court offense, attacking that last play. Britt finding Hicks for the dunk. Got to be aggressive. You can't be back on your heels. Tar Heels have hit all eight of their free throw attempts. They're down two. And Burry really moving pretty good with that ankle defensively. This is where he loves to post up. Made away over Jackson. Tough shot. Wow, that wasn't easy. He's got a little feel. But Jackson's long, and he had a hand up. Once you cut, they automatically change. You've got to split seams. Nice breakdown. Driving Short. on Bell. Look Meeks at this. Takes it like it's a pass and banks it home. <laughs> wow. uh, he is playing so well of late, too. They got the little small change on the drive. Britt. And what I love about Meeks, he anticipates every shot to be a miss. Just gets in there, uses his body, quick hands, and the adjustment there as Bell comes over to block the shot. But great touch inside. The way he uses his derriere reminds me of Charles Barkley a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Clearing people out. He cleared out a section when he walked in today. <laughs> Tenth team foul on North Carolina. Second foul on Britt. Analysis and a look back at Gonzaga's win over South Carolina. Coming up on the AT&T at the half. That was one of those great ones. What do you think of it? Oh, yeah. Mm. What a comeback. South Carolina down 14, middle of that second half. Peels off a 16-point run. Only to see Gonzaga turn it right back in their favor. Britt set and makes it from three. And a nice adjustment. Low post locked up, flash to the high, and the kick. Dorsey. Tough shot. There's Britt. Flying to the ball. Tar Heels. Been down as many as eight. Trying nice to take pass. the lead here, they do. It's Look. Meeks again, who's leading the way with 14 on the game. And what a job and impact Britt has had on this game. How about that? Gonzaga to old kill. His brother can shoot a jumper, but this kid can run a shot. Hicks last year, maybe it'll be Britt this year. <laughs> and Nate Britt has come off the bench and injected some life into this team. But I love his penetration, finding Meeks for the easy two. He hit a three on the previous play, dumping off to Hicks before that. Nice. Britt playing huge right now, getting the Tar Heels back in control. Something about that family, right? Are you think of Chris last year making that big one? <laughs> Jenkins. Stillman White comes in now at guard for North Carolina. Ooh. And that's on the line. Another turnover. I think they changed the D just a little bit there. Looked like they zoned up in the back through the Ducks off. Look at Meeks coming out, bailing out. Frisky, the big guy. Yeah, he's looked very fresh in this game. He's hit six out of seven from the field. Leading him in scoring and rebounding. See if they can do the little two for one here. Now with five to shoot. Well, Jack, that three's got range. Yeah, he's going to go baseline. How Floater. That? Oh, that was, <laughs> that that was amazing. He just works on that baby. So efficient, so confident. And you own the guy because you're right. He's got to be up on you the way he can crank him from deep. Tar Heels up three. 15 seconds to go in the first half. Got to go to the rim somehow. 
Very small lineup. Look at that rotation. Stumble White gets up and denies. Little jump switch. How about this defense? On the line, Oregon turns it over. And you love this right here. Jackson just getting to the baseline. A nice floater from like 10 feet, 15 feet from the basket. Carolina calls a timeout to set something up here in the final 2.4. If I were Roy, I'd put Luke May in the game. I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, just to end on that, if I were Roy, I'd put Grant Hill in the <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> it's going to be Meeks. Over to Jackson. Heaves it. And they head to the locker room. Off a 17 to 6 spurt. You said you felt it might be coming at the end of the half for North Carolina, and it did. An 11 point swing after being down eight. And certainly, North Carolina, an experienced team. They wanted to finish the half strong. They got back to, to getting easy baskets inside and now have control of the game going into the second half. All right, Tracy's standing by with Roy Williams. Thanks a lot, Coach. That zone matchup hurt you early. How were you able to adjust? Well, first of all, we got to get back on defense and get picked up and not take bad shots. Then that gives us a chance to, you know, if we're running, we're doing some good things, but their zone is difficult. We knew that, but we were not moving. The big guys especially were not moving. Joel Berry comes in with the ankle injuries. How do you feel he's done in this first half? Well, he, it's what it is, so we got to play. Appreciate it. Jim? Well, Berry hit that three-point basket in the opening seconds. Didn't make another shot from the field. Kennedy Meeks led them with 14. And the Tar Heels lead the Ducks 39-36 at the intermission. It was an issue for them on the inside. They need to do a better job defending him. Specifically, he wants to see active hands from his team. Jim? Okay, Tracy, thank you. We begin the second half with the starters back on the floor, including Pritchard of Oregon with three fouls coming out here to defend on Barry. Now, Grant, during halftime, we're saying, why not run your man-to-man -man stuff, Jim, which would be interesting. Here, they're just going over power. A little jump hook comes up empty yeah. by Hicks. Yeah, well, Ennis helped defend that play from behind Hicks as Pritchard wants to drive and now will back off. This might solidify their offense now, get guys better opportunities with Pritchard, who's more of a playmaker. How about this deep oh, thrust? Yeah. Wow. Too deep. It was short and pulled away by Hicks. Nice job by Burry, who takes the jumper. Short trip. And it's Ennis looking around, surveying, and keeping it. Right now, Hicks guarding Ennis. Interesting matchup, North Carolina. Pretty. Wow, look we'll at that. And you good, good call. They exploit <laughs> matchups, yeah. Oregon. That's what they do. Ennis all the way from the other end. Sees a seam, takes advantage. He's got 10 points. They exchange people beautifully. Now they stay man in the area. Hicks. Baseliner tipped up that? again. It's Meeks. Over help. Biggest mistake you can make. Got to stick your big guy. Seven of eight from the field. And five offensive rebounds by Meeks. Innes fires the three. Not this time. Bell. He twisted an ankle in that first half, but was able to return. Pritchard stuck. He Back out a, to him. Does a great job getting in the lane, usually finding it. Everybody stayed at home for Carolina. Brooks over Penson. <laughs> well, he's not getting any clean looks. Boy, they are really solid defensively on him. Barry left open. Followed up again. It's Meeks off his sixth offensive rebound. And, and I was complimenting him at 260. He lost a lot of weight when he first got to North Carolina. Oh, yeah, now he's fell to look at it. But the difference, the impact that yet that young man has made, <laughs> crashing the glass, that's what he's done his whole career, and showing how, he has a little explosion to the basket. How can you can't find him to check him out? I mean, that, that's a guy well, sprinting to the rim. Well, Bell always comes over from the weak side to help, mm -hmm. and he crashes the glass when he does. It is. And it's Meeks again. <laughs> Putting those thin paws on the ball. Pretty cool. Barry unable to hit Meeks. it. Meeks over the top. Yeah. How about Meeks? Eight out of nine, and you saw the rest of the team. 
is now under 25% from the field. Boy, exhibiting unbelievable pursuit of the basketball involved in the game. He has Great. six offensive rebounds, coach. <laughs> this guy <laughs> is feasting inside. Once again. Feasting. <laughs> yes. Did you think of it? <laughs> well, it came to Chapel Hill at like 320. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. We're going right at Bell's got to make it make him work on this end, I think. Double up on Bell. Nice cut by Pritchard, but it's a tiny guy. And it's Meeks with the ball over to Jackson. Three-point shot. And did you notice May right at the rim, too? Well, he, I, I, I love the trap, though, by Joel Berry. Bell not used to being trapped in. On the floor, and that's off Penson. And Coach Williams loves that effort. And one of the best teams at getting out in transition, finding their shooters, and Jackson knocking it down. One of the clean looks he's had here in the game. Timeout called by Coach Altman. And the Ducks suddenly down eight. They led eight at one time in the first half. By the way, a moment ago during that break, that was Hicks being stretched out. He's replaced by May on the floor. And for the first time, Dorsey hits from the field. Three-point shot that was much needed for the Ducks as they've seen Carolina go on quite a turnaround. A nice play. They didn't get the screen, but they got the lob. And another basket in the paint for Meeks. And that's his ninth field goal for the game, all in the paint. And that's a nice little back screen. They love to run. Jackson missed his guy, but the pass on the money. Ooh, lobbing it. Kicking it back out, passing up shots. Dorsey just hit one. This one's wide. I didn't mind that extra pass, though. Get Dorsey going a little bit. He just hit a three-pointer. Yeah, yeah. But you got to give Meeks the ball here. This is a tough it. match. And a traveling call. Automatic switch. Two wings. Nice down screen. In is so quick. Comes back out with it. I think the length of Pinson. Richard. Well, you got the. Feet set, but the shot was off. And the Meeks with a check out and gets the rebound. Nice coming around defense. to steal it. Yeah, you can see that coming. Bell. But back on his heels. Meeks. To the corner. Not this time for Ennis. And Meeks is everywhere. He has had a marvelous evening. And he's got a double double. That was his 10th rebound to go with the 20. Give it up and get a back screen. There's Barry. And it's Bell saying, I'll take it this way. Dorsey inside, missed the layup, but. Late call on Meeks. Yeah, but it was, was the right call. Yeah, but it was a little late. Get it right. And that was one of the few times that Dorsey's been able to turn the corner. The length of Jackson and Penson giving trouble to Dorsey. Getting to the basket, being aggressive. Here is Dan Fouts, yeah. <laughs> a proud Oregon Duck, the Hall of Famer. <laughs> That's the way he reacted with the linebacker. Linebackers <laughs> came after him. Right. That's right. <laughs> Who's got that guy? Uh, Zion Eagles partner, along with Wolfie and Fish. Yep. Hall of football. Famer and a Oregon quarterback, great renown back in the early 70s. There's uh, his family, wife Jerry on the far right. Great guy. And so excited to have the Ducks in the final four. Of course, he got them both. Five point game. Little trap here, half court, and they back it up into the match. Makes you use a little clock. Bradley on the offensive glass in this kind of a set. Good Jackson, he got stuck. He got stuck, and coming away with it is Benson. Nice flyby by Britt. Innes takes the lane and scores. Well, he has mixed his game up beautifully. And he not settling for the deep jumpers. 
Boy, he's so quick. Jackson. What an answer back. And you can't leave him alone. You get that matchup zone defense, you got to find their best shooter, Jackson. His third three of the night. This time out of control with it is in us. And on the floor, Bradley ties him up. And possession arrow off the jump situation belongs to Oregon. And I love the way Ennis gets to the basket, goes so strong, and you got to communicate when you get back in defense. Can't leave Jackson open. Great unselfish play by the Tar Heels. And Jackson adding to his tally the single season record 104 threes on this season. Well, he took the advice of counsel and started working on that jumper. Compliment his floater. And what a rotation he has on that shot. I got Bradley, I think, underneath. A little small change. Going to be a good one, too, that kid. A little offensive game at the other end. Sensational offensive rebounder. Big recruit for Roy Williams out of Florida. And that's been a problem getting that level kid, too, you know. The last few years. Yep, with all the things that have been swirling with the NCAA notice of allegations that came out several years ago. There's the foul on May and these upperclassmen really dominate this roster at North Carolina. They've had to live with all of this, all of the all the swirling innuendo about what went on there with the academic fraud allegations, but still nothing resolved. And I talked to Roy about it, and they, he feels they've cooperated. Uh, you know, it's one of those academic areas that they can't speak to. They answered the allegations, mm -hmm. and they feel they've been forthright and open, uh, but that hanging over them certainly curtails sometimes those great house visits you, you're accustomed to. So May not having exactly the same kind of uh, performance he had in both games in Memphis last week. He comes out. Hicks returns. Hicks was cramping up earlier. Mm -hmm. And you know, just to finish that thought, it's taken so long to make a decision. It's, it's detrimental to everybody involved. Nice cut after the Hicks tried to throw it down. Ennis right down the lane and oh, he was too strong. Had that burst of speed, but lacked the payoff. And wide Same open. Same spot on the floor and again. <laughs> That's, Jackson. That's when they're at the best when Burry does that type of thing. 18 for Jackson. Nine coming in this half. And we're just seven minutes into the second half. Innes. Long. Benson comes in. Bumped with the body by Barry. So Jackson has gotten awfully cozy in this corner a couple of times <laughs> in he, the last few minutes. And he's waving that he's open, but you, as you said, Barry finding him, getting in transition, and Jackson so much confidence. It was a good closeout, but he is tall, is confident, and knocking down that three. A cozy corner without a lazy boy. He is <laughs> getting them organized, and I love the way he was found by Barry. Nice hands. Jackson. Race for the basketball. He takes it off the floor. He knew he was going to get fouled, so he puts up the shot, and Dorsey, in fact, is called for it. That's the player of the year, that kid, huh? What a sensational denial. The run out, those long arms. And this is the smart play. This is like uh, you've been playing all your life. You hear that whistle, lit it up. Maybe you get a little kiss. He might be the most improved player in college basketball from last year to this year. Oh, he has been terrific. No question. His work habits, they tell us, extraordinary. And it falls. You know, it's a testament, too, to staying in a system, getting coached, maturing. Last year was Bryce Johnson, who before he was a first-team All-America, he wasn't even first-team All-Conference. That happened at the end of his career. And then same thing for Jackson. Well, the listening to advice, you yeah. know, the people that have their best interests at heart, and look how it's turned out for this kid. He's going to be certainly a, one of the high picks, not necessarily lottery, would you agree? But I, a, a well thought of pick, huh? I agree. Barry. And Barry just does not look right. A little unsure of himself on that shot. Ennis. Nice move to the other side. That's where Burry's got to run the show, though. Don't settle. A nice little ploy there, getting Dylan Brooks to run over him. The last 21 points for North Carolina have come from either Jackson or Meeks. 13 for Jackson, 8 for Meeks. And Roy really doing a nice job getting Meeks the blow 
to go through that TV timeout as well. Big B Williams, a junior from London, England, comes in, and Jackson will get a little extra blow here at the 12-10 mark before the under-12 mm -hmm. break. Pritchard back in too for Oregon. That is where you got to get offensive rebound. Not a great offensive looking team out there. Tapped out. Pinson tries to throw it off Dorsey. Said he was out of bounds. And Kennedy Meeks stepping up big for the Tar Heels <laughs> on the glass, making big plays. And of course, Justin Jackson getting loose on the perimeter, particularly in transition. So confident knocking down that three ball. And, and you know what? That's, well, look at these stats, and it doesn't tell me how they've been involved in the game and uh, their efficiency shooting. Oh, there's a little push off. Uh, Hicks. Uh, yeah, they're right now, these two uh, members of the uh, 2020 club for the Tar Heels this evening. Look, look at this. At, look at the rebounds here. I mean, it's just amazing the effort he's had, but I just love what they've done as defensively being in the right spot, trying to offensive rebound in Meek's case. Just solid experience. Both sitting down at the moment as Bradley stays inside. Hicks is a big body as well. Hicks only one of 10 from the field. Do you get the feeling Roy's resting because he knows his bench is so deep and he's going to have that support? You know, yes, indeed. They they know that they got a stretch run here down this, the end of the game. Needs Meeks and Jackson at their best. Going to a little zone here on this out of bounds play. Two officials conferring to make sure there was perhaps a, a reason to change the shot clock, but tough pass from the corner. And, and you wonder if this may wear down Oregon is. Well, they were right there defensively. What a nice job. Hicks, great presentation. See if he can do something. He's got a little hook game in here. Well, nice tied help. up, tied up by Brooks. Boy, there's some toughness there. It's a Carolina arrow, and let's go to Tracy. Jim, you guys were talking about it, and Dana Altman was talking to his team about it during that last time out. He said, know where Justin Jackson is at all time. He also told them to move the ball and make plays for your teammates. Jim? I'll tell you another thing that Dana Altman told us uh, when we met with him yesterday morning. He was concerned this might be really the first game in this tournament really shows up the absence of Boucher. Yeah, that's a great point, too. Just look at that. They, they got out and closed out there, but Boucher, such a, he can stretch the deal yep. with the three point shot. We know what he can do blocking shots and dominating. Boy, that's deep. And that effective. is huge for Dorsey and the Ducks to bring it down to four. And the Ducks are just hanging around, making plays. North Carolina got a little lazy there, not respecting his range. Can't keep these two guys quiet, Dorsey and Brooks. Hicks, a little wild with it, but Bradley keeps it down at this end. Picks again, and then swatted how, away. How about the presentation? Big B Williams living up to his name. And Hicks is really struggling. Of course, great defense here. Big B Williams with the block, but Hicks is one for 12 from the field. Obviously, Meeks has picked it up for him. Needs to be more productive down the stretch. Meeks and May inserted into the Carolina lineup. Now Jackson, one of those guys who can score, but he's patient. Doesn't take many bad shots. Nice little screen here in a pop. Pinson, left wide open. <laughs> and Oregon pays for it. And one of their best possessions against the zone. Move from side to side, get the ball in the middle. And Pinson was wide open for his three. And finally, Another Tar Heel scores other than Jackson or Meeks. After they had reeled off the last 21 for North Carolina. Well, they're really toughing it up on the perimeter here. Brooks. Nice help Jackson. Away by Jackson. Oh, nice read. He does so many things for this team. Stepped right into that passing lane. May. Great ball fake. Got Big B Williams to commit. Has his shot blocked. And it's going back to Oregon. And I'll tell you what, this Oregon team, great anticipation inside, blocking shots. All these guys are capable of doing it here tonight. Now you've got to get available if you're Carolina, though, when you, once you get in the lane. Now make a decision. You don't just have to go up and feed them. Mm 
It's interesting. Both teams have played well in stretches, but no rhythm to this game. Nice and job. He's been great, hasn't he? By the way, did you see Brooks whack Pitts in there? And he really likes to initiate a little contact. Ennis, the top scorer for Oregon with 16. He has been terrific. Barry, there's another block by Bell, but no. Got a foul call. You like Ennis's game? I do like him. He's aggressive. He attacks. No fear going inside with the big fellas and athletic, strong, tremendous touch. Was that a smooch? No, that wasn't a smooch. <laughs> <laughs> but it's his first foul at the other end, sending Barry to the line. Uh, we all talk about how valuable Barry is. Celebrate all four teams making it to the NCAA Final Four. Official gear from the NCAA store. Get team apparel and NCAA Final Four Phoenix gear at NCAA.com slash shop. And if Barry can get into the lane and find some people, I think it's really going to be effective. See if Pritchard can get them going at the other end. A lot of one on one little ISOs by the Ducks. Oh, there you go again, Ennis. Power. I don't know how he gets in there with uh, the Giants. He's got some physique, though. Look who's got a guard, too. He's going to play both ends. Henson got stuck. How about but that Meeks is there. Oh. How about that fine? Oh, man. Didn't look like there was any opening until the end. He found them. Tough shot here. C. And, and Jim, look who's right up there. Jackson plays both ends of the floor. Well, not a good foul. And it's on Brooks. Trying to be a little physical. His third. We talk about this pass. Pinson getting to the lane and just. Behind his oh, back, man. finding that's, Meeks. That's amazing. It is incredible. Not his biggest assist of the tournament, though. No, not at that all. That is true. That is <laughs> not true. at all. Right. He was running out of territory, <laughs> yeah. though, when he was driving left. He didn't and know the, where the, to go the, there. Nice, nice find with May. Yeah. Benson back on the floor for yeah. Oregon. Both Benson and Pritchard seeing time right now. And look at the size on the floor. All guards and Bell. And they, you know, they go inside with an offensive rebound. But you got to go inside with the ball. Look around. And Joel Berry struggling as well. One for ten from the field. One for six from the three-point line as Isaiah Hicks. But I tell you, Meeks on the glass. Great rebound. And a shot fake getting Bell in the air, drawing the foul. He's a happy go lucky kid, but boy, he's putting that aside. Big time performance. Seventh offensive rebound, <laughs> 12 overall. They get two bodies on him. Yeah, but exactly. Well, they're so tiny out there right now. I don't know how you keep them away from the glass. This is like a faculty game for Oregon right now with the tiny guys out there. <laughs> First missed free throw of the game for the target. But Benson, what a pass! Gets it over to Meeks. We talked about his passing all tournament, all year. What a find! He had such a great dimension to this club. Puts him up ten. Approaching the eight-minute mark, Ennis, who's tried to take it into his own hands, goes inside. Bell dives nice. over to North Carolina. And Meeks was the guy. And they have numbers. Jackson. I think it hit off of him. Yeah. That's what they're going to say. And I'll tell you He's what, a great effort by Pinson on the offensive rebound. Well, they got a foul, I think, against Carolina. No, they, they actually called it, they called it a jump ball. Oh. And the arrow belongs to Oregon. Wow. I didn't see that. They just weren't sure. What to call? Uh, yeah, yeah, what to call? Well, Jackson tried that pocket pass, and, and it should have been should have been a ball, ball, yeah. ball anyway. Yeah. But I don't know about a jump ball. Cost him an arrow. Well, yeah, exactly. That's important. It is. As you know. And this has been the guy that's been a factor. Ooh. Reach in. Wow. 
Huge thud as Brooks hits the floor. Fouled on the way in. And stepping up, great individual performer as well. Yeah, they're combined four for 17 from the field and give credit to Pinson and Jackson. Their link has given them problems. And Jim, how about this guy being found by uh, Dana? Dana Altman? He has uh, not only the respect of the entire coaching community for what he can do on the bench, but his ability to find talent. Uh, he's a lifer. You know, he went up there and we said, oh, my goodness, who is that guy? Because I knew him years ago. A good friend of mine, Jim Curran, was an assistant at K-State yep. with him. His mentor, Lon Kruger, that which you noted. Great affection for him. Gave him a lot of advice coming into the tournament. This guy is a winner. Makes some sort of a spin out, maybe. Benson, long with the jumper. And Brooks says, let's take off. Goes to Ennis on a wing. Had Look numbers for a go. second. Look at Ennis. Left hand tap. Pretty. Yes. Oh. That's Bell. I thought like Bell hung in the air. Yeah, I thought one. the same oh, thing. Wow. He was lingering between floors. He's down six. First points of the half for Bell. There's Britt. <laughs> oh, big shot. He is a quick kid to the 10. A little set up with the cross. Pritchard struggling, gets it back out, Dorsey. Barry at his face. And on the drive, there was contact. I think it's on Britt. It is. It's going to be a one and one at the line. Tough assignment there, too, on that penetration. I like Dorsey and Brooks now, and of course, and this is ability put it on the deck. That's their whole offense right now. Well, again, one and one for Dorsey. See if so, they get a little full court pressure now. They do. Again, down to six. Carolina breaks it with ease. One, two, one, one. They like to put out there. You haven't seen much of that Oregon zone here in the second half. Now they're still pointing and exchanging, so it's more like a lot of switching yeah, though on the yeah, perimeter. Exactly. Empty side there. Barry. Wow. Oh. Hasn't hit a shot. He's down on the floor again. And an Oregon player came out of his shoe. But Barry. That's not a problem with that program. <laughs> they have lots of those. We can, we can replace that. One. <laughs> and Joel Barry just not able to turn that corner like we're accustomed to seeing him. Both ankles may be giving him trouble, but he's giving a valiant effort out here, continuing to compete and stay aggressive. And he hit his first shot of the night. Mm -hmm. He did. A three pointer in the first seconds of the game. You know, when he runs the club, though, he's pretty effective. Didn't they come out here a day early, too, because there's swelling? The they concern? did. Yeah. Want to make sure that the travel and. Get him out here. Nice pass. Just it. Meeks. Ooh. Oh, what a block by Ennis. <laughs> My goodness. Clean, too. Barry. Finally got another one to go. It's a three. And it's a standstill. He didn't have to move at all. Nice find. How about that block by Ennis? <laughs> oh, wow. Here's Brooks. Hey, oh, I thought he had it. They got it on Meeks or underneath. And Ennis, I mean, they have him listed as 6'2. I don't know about that, but he got up high. A nice he, confrontation at the rim, but Pinson once again making the right play, finding the open berry, and that was an easy shot. I think they got Britt on that one. They did. That's mistaken. his four. Yeah. yeah, he's got four now. He's played well, Britt, though. Great contribution. Hicks will replace him. Morgan just hanging around, staying in striking distance, but they're going to have to get some stops on the defensive end. Ducks have hit their last 16 free throws. And Bell big on the ball. See if they attack here. Barry, oh, where are you in. going? You got tripped, though. They got, a, they got a foul. Interesting. I thought Burry could have kicked it to Jackson. I thought Pinson was open, too, but yeah. Barry determined to get there. And when you drive hard, sometimes you 
generate contact and Barry tripping over. I don't know if it was on Brooks. It is on Brooks. That's a big one. That's number four. Wow. What a With way to get 35 to go. And off the mark on the front end. He's a big time shooter at 80. Oregon refuses to be chased away. Well, they've had a solid year. A lot of guys you can answer. Ennis. That would have cut it to four. Pritchard. He'll try it too. Bell. And long shots lead to long rebounds. Lead to runouts too. <laughs> right? Exactly. I thought Brooks had a good look. Yeah, one of yeah. those falls. Pritchard it's a looked, four point yeah, game. Yeah, Pritchard had a great look. Second on Bell. One and one for Pinson. Hey, you know, we we're talking about Dana before. How about that building that crate? They fill it now. They fill it in his day. One of you guys, Corver, played there, right? Kyle so. oh, Corver. Yeah. Corver, a yeah. great college player. But you know, when Dana Altman was at Creighton, he was there 16 years. He one time he took over a program that well was seven and 19. Mm -hmm. And he had them consistently in the NCAA tournament. Went from Creighton to Oregon. And for stops at Kansas State and Marshall as well. Look at the feistiness that Brooks could have coughed it up. Well, he sort of established that program for the long run it's had. Yes, he did. Yeah. Nice He's fake. <laughs> <laughs> He's just having fun. Oh, man. Talk about being an athlete. What would have Boucher brought to this game? Well, one, he can make that corner three. Uh, I just think dominating the inside, I don't think Meeks would have it as easy. Would you agree? I agree. And North Carolina is the one team they face in the tournament that has that size inside, and Kennedy Meeks having a career game here, 25 points, 12 rebounds. Boucher would have made a difference. So that's four, by the way, fellas, on Kennedy Meeks. Tenth team foul. So you got Britt and Meeks on the Carolina side with four. Brooks, again, the conference player of the year in the Pac-12, has four for Oregon. And the first thing Dana said when we asked him, what's your concern? He said the size of Carolina. So it adds on to the Boucher dilemma. Oregon back in that matchup zone. Constantly talking, Bell's very communicative in the center spot there. But you got to have awareness for where Jackson is at all times. Oh, Perry Pierce. shot blocks. That was Bell. Oregon, the second leading shot blocking team in college basketball in the season. Of course, Boucher had a lot to do with that mm -hmm. as well as Bell. Here's Ennis. Wide open. Dorsey. Oh, that's the third good look they've had. And we landed outside Pence in there. And, and you said it best. Oregon's had some great looks. Drive and kick. Just unable to convert. But Ennis taking advantage of that matchup, getting to the paint, trying to make something happen for the Ducks. Ducks two for 14 from three land this half. Bell. Back in the freshman. And Pinson comes over. And slaps him on the shooting hand. And Actually going to call it here. And at some point defensively, you Bradley. have to have some resistance there in the post. But that let Bell get all the way into the paint, backing you down. Inexperienced too, Bradley. Not freshman. Uh, he'll, he'll learn. It's amazing when you look at Bell and the others on the floor, what they've been able to do coming down the stretch of this season in the Pac-12, which had a heck of a year. We both know UCLA, of course, Arizona. Nice look. Oh, oh, the pass got away from him. But Hicks. Jackson's great, though. Boy, that was a great look, wasn't it? Got to come through Jackson, I think. There he is, How Jackson. 
Nice rebound. Bradley. Bradley throws it over his shoulder, but right there with it is Ennis. They attack. Nice look. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Too steep for Bell. Smith, Smith with the giveaway on the rebound. Oh, I know he missed it, but that <laughs> was amazing. That would have brought the house down. 72-67. The Ducks hanging around Tar Heels in front, looking for a Monday night appearance. As we have 324 to go in the second semifinal game. Gonzaga already in the championship game Monday night with its win over South Carolina and a heart stopper earlier. So Justin Jackson at the line. And we talked during the break about Joel Berry, and he, obviously he's struggling with his ankle problems, but he's got to play within himself. You got to mm -hmm. understand you have to adapt and adjust and be more of a playmaker and a facilitator and not a scorer. When you're not as healthy, you're saying, right? Exactly. Yeah. Jackson with 22 points. A little zone look here now. Uh, see if it changes. You're going to get an open look or a dribble drive. Certainly an offensive view. Bell has been great on the glass. Ducks have had some opportunities, have not been able to hit the big shot. They're not able to drive here. Oh, a little small changer out there. And that's number five if it's Britt. No? I think it's no, on Penson. Penson. Yep. Yeah. Number three on Penson. Smart by Oregon and, and Dorsey attacking that zone off the bounce and not settling, getting to the free throw line. Last seven points for the Ducks have come from the free throw line. After this potential uh, make by the Oregon, I think you got to get into that, that pressure again. Try to get a steal or catch the Tar Heels off guard. Or maybe Bell, who does guard the inbound, would be a little bigger on the ball. Uh -oh, there, yeah, here he comes. Okay, it's a five point game again at the three minute mark. And we saw Meeks take it out last week. He had a little problem, if yes, you recall. Got, got a side count on him one time. Pinson, oh. back of the rim, and Oregon sweeps it away with Bell. Well, a big time handle and opportunity. Yeah, big time trip. Mm. Carolina's gone small to match. And more man, too, right now. They got out of that zone. Ooh. Brooks. Wow. Way downtown. I don't know if that's the one you wanted. Yeah. Ooh, that green light sometimes. Put a yellow one up. <laughs> Green light, he has the purple light. <laughs> <laughs> With a point forward mentality. Jackson does make good decisions. And Carolina using the clock right now. Gotta go though. But they have to lead, they have to go exactly. At five, Barry looks up, he sees it. And that is Bell with an easy block that time. Actually hit his elbow. Innes nice slices play, through the Jackson. defenders, no whistle. Off the floor with it, I think Barry touched it last. Oh, Ted Valentine oh. says it's going the other way. Uh, are they staying here? No. I think they're going to go go review this play here. Yeah. Well, it was slapped out by Oregon, but did it touch Barry at all? And of course, we're under two minutes by a fraction, so they can sure. look at it. Well, watch it go right under Barry, though. Watch. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. No. I yeah. think it's off of Oregon on that play. You, you got to. Love the effort both teams yeah. laying it all on the line diving for loose balls, but I do think this is North Carolina basketball. Hey, hey, you know, Burry's had some tough roads, but this tells you what he's all about though, don't you think? Oh, true. This kind of effort. I mean, he's playing at half his speed and it's at least the third time in the late stages he's hit the floor. And uh, a nod to Bob Fishman, Mark Wolf, and our superb production and technical team. They've got all the angles covered here. Oh, just yeah, missed his a, finger right yeah. there. He got a Manny Petty this morning. So <laughs> yeah. Good thing he did. <laughs> oh. That comes from a man who sounds like he has a lot of experience. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, thought I, you tried, were, I thought you were blue collar, right? Yeah, really. I used I to get a man of the people. I used to get him with regularity, but they, they turned him down on my expense account. <laughs> okay. I think they got this one at this point, don't you? Yeah, no, no question.
have been so many times when Oregon's come down to this end of the floor and you think man if they hit a big basket here suddenly it's going to be a one possession game but they've missed their last six from the field have not made a bucket in the last five minutes and 20 seconds they've had a lot from the free throw line but have not hit the big shot from the outside and it's confirmed it's Carolina ball with 157 to go. And Jim, to and your they, point, Oregon's had some open looks they've missed, but they've also taken some bad shots. Ill advised shots, not really trusting their offense here down the stretch. Looking to double with Bell, and Meeks taking it out. Like we mentioned he had some problems. They got a perfect trap, jump ball. No. Numbers here. Smart. It's amazing how Roy Williams trusts Kennedy Meeks in those situations yeah. taking the ball out. I think he loves his size and also you know as it gets close to the end of the game foul situation. Barry has it with seven to shoot. Oh my goodness. You know Watch that? out Brooks had. That's awful close to a jump ball. I That's going to be it for Brooks. Yeah. Well I didn't see a whole lot there. No, I thought he got all ball here. This kid is tough. That's that's a good play. Good tough play. Oh, hard nose, competitive. Ooh, big call against Oregon as Brooks fouls out. He hit only two of eleven from the field. Scored ten points, six rebounds, a couple of steals, but he had five turnovers as well. And that's this, a hard guy to replace. Sure is. And this is where Burry can show his metal. Coming down towards the end here, making these. Wow. I think you got to put it in Jackson's hand down the stretch here. Mm -hmm. Let him close it for you as Barry's struggling from the field. Still a two score game with a minute and a half to play. Go to the rim. They shut it off fine. You need a quick hitter, just attack. Ennis, he'll take it inside. Oh. Bell, put back, yes. With 118 to go and a timeout called by Dana Altman. So there it is down to four at 75 71. Now, I would not guard and this sounds crazy Meeks on the inbound. I would double up the next logical ball handler who obviously would be Burry. And see if you could do something they got Smith on the ball and they've got a free safety in the back in Bell. North Carolina you have to value the basketball come meet your passes on this play don't assume. But you're open. Ooh, Over goodness. the head of Barry, and it belongs to Oregon. The right idea. It's a great trap by Oregon. Uncharacteristic of North Carolina not executing in this situation. Jackson. I'm afraid to afraid the back turn to two in yeah. that corner, right? It's a two Go. possession ball game here. Go to the hole. Pritchard. Over Barry. Short with the shot. Off one hop. Barry has it. Henson coming in. Look at this rebound by Jackson. They're going to call first to foul on Pinson. Yeah, and that's the second layup. Point He's blank missed. at the basket. He's missed, but Pinson filling the, way, the lane and getting to the basket. Going so hard, and Dorsey wrapping around, getting called for the foul, but wait. But the foul was on Pinson, not Jackson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess being pointed out here. Dorsey picked it Dorsey up. Dorsey said, wait a and minute, he's not move. the shooter. And that's a smart move, sure Jackson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go to the line, you might shoot it. Pinson only a 68% free throw shooter, whereas Justin Jackson a little bit better at 74. <laughs> that's what Leitner would do to me back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were a pretty good combo. Two shots for Pinson. 57 seconds to go. Well, he has passed the ball well today, too, hasn't he? Found people with regularity. Five assists. Brooks can only watch as Pinson tries to bring it back to a six point lead. Now, you want to cause a little delay in their offense here if you can, if you're Carolina. Oh, that's not a good shot. My goodness, Dorsey. Look at this rebound by Pinson. Off the floor with it, dumped down low. Bell doubled up. Outside. Big shot here. Open. And it oh. falls somehow. <laughs> My goodness, everyone in the building held their breath for a half a second. Oh, there are paint chips on the floor. <laughs> yeah. Goodness. Talk about touch. Big time kick out. 
affectionate little caress. <laughs> Brings it down to three. Oregon had missed its last eight from three, but they hit a triple with 42 seconds to play. The Ducks are out of timeouts. 42 seconds to go. That last shot was amazing. Look at Dorsey almost fell down. Tripped over Meeks, got up, and yes, it <laughs> falls. Oh, how smart was he, though, to get out to the three-point line? Meeks to inbound. Full court pressure coming up. And a lot of people down this end enables a little easier trap. See if they go for the home run. Jackson, who wants to keep it? Be strong with the ball in this situation if you're North Carolina. 11 second differential on the clocks. I say get the ball to Jackson in this situation. Oh, he almost slipped yes, too. He did, recovered. Well, oh, that would have been a perfect trap out that far. Gotta go. Must rebound if you're Oregon. Henson. Rebounded by Bell. He's on the floor though. They have no timeouts. He able to escape. Pritchard. Down low, they go for the two. Smith hits it with six seconds. Carolina inbounds to Meeks, and they wrap him up with five. How about that? Talk about effort and decision making. Whew. Well, Bell on the floor knows he can't call the timeout. Right. Was able to right. somehow squeeze it out. And great job by Oregon after the make to make sure that Meeks is the one getting the ball, fouling him. He's 63% free throw shooter. And a little delay of the game, too. Uh, this helps. It freezes a little, a little bit on the free throw line for Meeks. Checking on the time. Look at this recovery off the floor. And then Pritchard thought about the three, says, nope, and give it up. Down low they go. And that was smart. That's about right. mind. Yeah, Six, get a five, quick maybe. They're checking the clock here. Yeah. This is why there's the oh. basically a free timeout for Oregon that didn't yeah. have any. Exactly. Get themselves organized. And more They're actually going to add a little time here. They're going to add six tenths of a second. And more importantly, Meeks walking around out there has got a little more time to think about it. So yeah. it goes to 5.8. And it's tough for Oregon. Dylan Brooks fouled out. He's hit two game winners this year. Oh, yeah. One against UCLA, mm -hmm. one against Cal. Mm -hmm. He stroked them on both occasions. <laughs> And with all that. <laughs> Thank you. So the word from Ted as he comes over and says, we're going to keep you guys here a little bit longer. We added six tenths of a second. Well, all depending on what the free throws happen here as to what you're going to do. Two shots for Meeks. My goodness. Oregon's been hanging around. Yeah. Uh, big thing now is you don't want Ennis to get the ball or Pritchard. And Carolina, make or miss here. You have to communicate, get back, and guard your man, mm -hmm. and don't give up any three point shots. And I wouldn't extend either because you speed them up a little bit. Ducks are going to get their chance. What nope, a save it comes by out Pinson. to Barry. And a giveaway by Pritchard. My Pinson. goodness. Pinson, well, he always wanted to send it in. <laughs> and I'll give him, I'll give him that yeah. for that particular save. He begged you for it last oh, week in Memphis. Man. And Bell did not box that. out. No. He didn't Never box touched out. him. Oh. And that just kills a team. And Roy Williams is so excited. But Pinson making big plays. Made a big play last week, <laughs> too. Did. Still four point, well, four seconds exactly. For Barry, who's going to shoot two. Short. Oh my goodness. Boy, and the Tar Heels have been superb all night from the line. They've missed three in a row. Yeah. And this has to do a good job on Jackson on that side. And Oregon has to box out here. I like Ennis going coast to coast. Get yep. to the paint, make well, something happen. Takes about four seconds for a real speedy player to do that. Long. Second one, no. And makes Carolina saves it on the glass. How about that? The best rebounding team in college basketball. Is headed to the title game. And, and how did they win this game, coach? On the glass. It's offensive a, rebounds. 
on a free throw. North Carolina getting it done like they've done it all season long on the offensive glass. It's only Finney. They are so tough. And they have been for years. Big guys coming up with big rebounds. That yep. is their mantra. And who was the guy? Kennedy Meeks. He's been big all game. Look at the Ooh. 25 points, 14 rebounds, eight offensive rebounds, and that one came at the right time. And of course, Bell, once again, not blocking out his man in that situation, leads to a Carolina victory. It was the game of his life for Kennedy Meeks. Ties a career high 25 points, 14 rebounds, and you just. Thought that the Ducks were going to get one chance to race down the floor and give it their shot for glory. Mm. It never occurred. Fundamentals.